Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Mal and I'm the owner and maker of Made by Meanie and Mal. In today's video, we're going to be doing another Pinterest inspired Tumblr tutorial. You guys know I love finding inspiration on Pinterest. And when I saw this photo, I just immediately saw it as a Tumblr. So this is the photo we're going to be recreating today. This is just like so fun and kind of like weird a little bit. I just love how it's kind of different. I love the colors and like I said, I just immediately saw it on a Tumblr. So I really hope that you enjoy it. If you do, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you are not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well so you don't miss any new videos. I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Everything I'm using is linked down below in the description box as well as links to our social media pages, our Facebook group, Patreon group, as well as some discount codes for you, of course. So I think that's it. Let's go. We're starting with a 30 ounce stubby from Craft Haven. We're gonna go right into our base paint color. We're using blue gray from Pop of Color Paints. This is the perfect match to my inspiration picture. If you would rather use spray paint though, Winter Gray from Rust-Oleum would also be a pretty close match. I know the inspiration picture is a little bit darker, but I do like this blue gray color. So I'm gonna do just one coat of this paint on here. I'm gonna let it dry about an hour, and then I'm going to add my first coat of epoxy. Into this epoxy, I'm going to mix Halo Mica Powder from PDB and Special Edition Flurries from Peachy Olive Glitters. I'm putting just a little bit of flurries in there, and then I'm gonna add a pretty significant spoonful of Halo. And then I'm going to pour in about 20 to 25 milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy, of course. Mix it together really well, and then I'm going to apply the entire amount onto this cup. And this is going to serve as a really good base for our outer space night sky. Adding both the mica and the glitter into the epoxy gives the finish just this really beautiful dimension. It's just, I love doing it. It's one of my favorite techniques. Once I've got the epoxy on there, I'm gonna hit it really well with my torch to pop any bubbles. And I'm gonna let this cure about eight to 12 hours and then go right in with the second coat. That one was about 10 to 15 milliliters. So now we have got two coats of epoxy on our cup and we're ready to go in with all of our details. So I'm gonna start off by doing the clouds at the bottom. Um, I'll put up the picture here so that you can kind of see what we're doing as we put it together. But I'm just taking my painter's tape and taping off the bottom third of my cup. And now we're going to go in and sketch out our clouds. I'm using a Sharpie, but you can use a pencil, pen, whatever you have. Um, and I'm just gonna draw out kind of where I want these clouds to go. And I wanna add in a little area where the cloud kind of breaks up and you can see the sky in between just to give this another level of detail. So I'm gonna sketch out this top cloud and then coming down from that, one of my little points of my cloud, I'm gonna sketch out the area where it's gonna kind of cut in and we're gonna end up cutting all of this out. So there will be an open space like from your sky all the way down, if that makes sense. You'll see once I cut it out, but I'm just gonna add this in here and I'm writing myself a little note so I know what to cut and what not to cut. So now I'm going to take my craft knife and very carefully, I cannot stress, please be careful when you're doing this. It's really hard to cut round shapes with your craft knife, so take your time, go slow, and please don't slice your fingers off. So I'm just going to go around here. You can see how slowly I'm going, and I'm just gonna trace what I drew out and go all the way around. Everything that is drawn out, I'm going to cut out, and then we'll pull off all of our tape to reveal our kind of little cloud stencil sky here. So I'm just using my craft knife to get the tape lifted, and then I'm gonna peel it up with my hands just like normal. Um, there were a couple places where I had to go in and kind of trim again and touch up my clouds. It's totally okay. If you wanted to reshape your clouds, you can totally do that as well. So there's what we've got now. I'm gonna do another little piece of tape up above and then wrap the rest of my cup in saran wrap. 
and base paint this with flat white paint from Rust-Oleum. I'm gonna let that dry about 45 minutes and then go in with my glitter. I'm using Anka from PDB and Bliss from Chase Ray. I'm gonna do about a two, two to one ratio. So one part Bliss and two parts Anka. This Bliss adds just the right, like perfect touch of sparkle to Anka. Anka is a really like fluffy, beautiful like cloud textured glitter um, and bliss just gives it that little bit of iridescence that really takes it over the edge so i'm going to use my crystallac glitter glue to apply this glitter i'm just brushing a thin even coat all over this white area that i painted including the bottom of the cup and then i'm going to go in with this glitter mix i'm really proud of this one i might have to mix a whole bunch and put it in a bottle because i really really love how it looks the camera doesn't even pick up the sparkle it's just, it's so pretty in person. So I'm gonna cover the entire area of the cup with this glitter, and then I'm going to go in and remove my saran wrap and all of my tape. Peeling up this top edge of tape was so super satisfying. I love like revealing what it looks like <laughs> with the glitter. Um, be really careful if you're doing the same peekaboo section to just make sure you don't like scratch off any of your glitter or mess anything up. Just really, really take your time and be super careful. So this is what it looks like with our clouds glittered. I am going to take my Crystalac glitter glue and seal this cloud glitter. I don't really want this to be migrating all over the cup as we work. I really want everything to be sealed as we go so that we don't have to worry about anything mixing or moving around. I'm gonna let that dry a full two hours and once it's dry, I'm ready to move on to the next step which is building our mountain range. So I'm going to tape off the like middle part of our cup. And originally I was going to use painter's tape and cut around the clouds and just use that as my like painting border. And then I thought, you know what? I would rather just go in and paint tape free, just paint a little bit more carefully so you can ignore that bottom piece of tape. But I added two more pieces on top of that. And then I added one just like half piece of tape on one side of the cup so that I can draw a couple tall mountains, but that we don't have to go all the way around the cup. So now I'm going to take my Sharpie and just sketch out my mountains. You don't have to be an artist to do this. Um, just draw some squiggly lines going up and down and they will look like mountains in the end. So I drew a couple short ones, a couple tall ones. Doesn't really matter whatever you feel, just go with it. Then I'm going to take my craft knife and cut around the lines I just drew. Again, please be very, very careful as you do this. If you have a shaky hand or you're a little unsteady, that's okay because you're gonna just add to the natural organic nature of your mountains. So once this is all cut out, I'm going to remove all of the tape on the inside of the mountain. So we want that tape that's on the outside, like up on the top to stay because that's going to act as our stencil. So all the other tape, I'm gonna take off. I do want to bridge the gap in our clouds, so I'm gonna put one piece of tape down and we're just going to cut out a quick little like hillside terrain piece. Doesn't have to be straight, just draw however of a wonky line you want. And this time you're going to peel off the top portion so that we have a bottom stencil and we can just fill in now all of this empty space in the middle. To glitter our mountains, I'm gonna mix two glitters together. I'm taking Southern Belle and Pink Panther, both from PDB. And I'm doing about a 50-50 mixture. We are going to add a little bit more Pink Panther at the end, so it's gonna be more pink than coral, but we're using a coral base. You might recognize this base paint from another video. I'm using it again. And I wanted to show you a little trick that I use for figuring out if a base color and a glitter are gonna go well together. I just take a popsicle stick and put a little bit of my base paint onto the end of it, and then I apply my glitter to it. Um, and this way you can see what the glitter is going to look like on whatever base color. You can also do this with a piece of paper if you have a piece of cardboard. Um, I always like to test out what it's going to look like 
um, especially if you have like iridescent glitters that pick up your base color. It's always kind of cool to see how they'll look on different bases. So I did add a little bit more Pink Panther to my mix as you saw there, and I'm taking some of my Crystallat glitter glue and just adding a little bit of this coral paint to it in a medicine cup. And I'm going to start painting in my mountains here. I'm going pretty rough with my painting up on the top edge with the tape. And then once we get down to the cloud portions, I took a little smaller detailing brush and went in and I was really careful, just made sure I didn't get any paint on those mountains. And then I went in and added a little bit more paint to the entire surface, just kind of thickened up the base a little bit. And you can see that the base paint is not perfect. That's okay. This glitter is going to cover up most of those imperfections and add a little bit more dimension to the mountains. Um, seeing that kind of variance in the color is just going to make the mountains look a little bit more organic um, and make them kind of look a little bit cool. So once I had my glitter mixture onto the cup fully coated, I went back in with just Pink Panther by itself and filled in any gaps, just went over the entire mountain area with Pink Panther by itself shook off any excess and now I'm going to go in and very very carefully remove all of my tape. So if you need to use your tweezers or your craft knife or whatever you need to get in there and pull up that tape, go for it. Just be really careful. You don't want to scratch your paint or your glitter or anything in your mountains. So just be careful. Take your time. Um, and once all of your paint is pulled up, you're going to set this aside and let it dry at least two hours. So now that my paint is dry, my glitter's dry, everything's good. I'm going to go in and seal my mountains up using the same Crystallac glitter glue, of course. And when I'm doing this, I'm really not worried about the glitter like moving up a little bit as I seal like up over the edge of the mountains. It's okay if a little bit of it gets up in there, but I don't want to have the glitter not be sealed as we go in and do all of our next steps. So I am sealing it. The next thing we're going to do is add our planets and I just put these little planets together. Um, I got the planets from Creative Fabrica, but they were just like a coloring page and then I edited them so that I could add the color to them. So I just matched the colors to what was in my image and then I cut them out on my silhouette. So we're going to be layering these decals, but if you don't want to layer, you can always find a PNG of some cute planets and then just print them out on printable vinyl. That's totally an option, but I just like the look of the layered vinyl a little bit better for this project specifically. I also cut out a little crescent moon and some tiny little star burst clusters that we're going to add later. And what I'm going to do is start by layering all of my planets first before I put them on the cup. So I'm going to make all of my planets their full color selves um, and then I'll go back in and outline them with the black outlines once they're on the cup. So I'm just gonna put these together really quick. Um, I did try to vary the color combinations and the size of my planets, so they're not all the same size. Um, I made them each no larger than two inches. This is a pretty big cup, so the planets could be kinda big, but I did wanna have just some nice little star space sky around them as well. So I'm gonna layer these really quick and then we will put them on our cup. I did want to have one planet peeking out from behind the mountains, how there is in the picture. So I'm going to put that one on the cup first and then kind of place all my other planets according to this one. So I'm just going to pull it off the backing and then place it right over that glitter. Um, and then I'm going to remove my transfer tape and then take my craft knife and cut against that glitter. Part of the reason I didn't do a coat of epoxy before going in with these decals is because I want to use the glitter, the rough glitter to my advantage. Having that texture underneath the vinyl is going to help me figure out exactly where I need to trim off the excess so that everything lines up perfectly. Then I went in with my moon, but I ended up moving that later. I also removed that other planet that you saw there. Um, and I put this planet kind of in that area instead. I really liked these kind of striped zebra-y looking planets. So I put that one on there. And then I went back in and just placed the rest of my planets wherever I thought they would fit. 
Um, like I said, I'm not trying to crowd this too much. I do want to show some of the sky. I added another planet peeking out from another area of the mountains. And I'm just using that rough glitter as my guide for cutting this excess off. Um, and we are going to outline these in black, remember, so you won't be able to see any of those rough edges. And then I just added one more little planet up at the top here, and I'm going to trim off the excess. So now we've got all of our planets laid out, and I'm really liking how this is turning out so far. So now I'm going to go in with my black outlines, and I'm just going to apply these one by one to the cup. Um, these were actually really, really easy to line up. I was kind of nervous about going in with the black outlines. I didn't want to ruin it. Um, I almost didn't add these, and then I thought, you know what? No, I'm going to add them, and I'm really glad I did. It really makes the planets pop, and it gives them that nice finished look. So I'm going to go in and just add all of these, trim off the excess too to the ones that are behind the mountains, and I'm going to add the one up, up top later. I had to recut it. So now I'm going to go in with all of these little starbursts, and I tried this trick where you just really aggressively weed your vinyl, and it actually worked out really well. I was super nervous to weed these tiny little pieces, and ripping off the excess vinyl, weeding it like a band-aid, worked out great. So highly recommend it. Um, I'm just going to take these little starbursts here and just apply them randomly all over this night sky. I didn't want to do too much. I wanted it to still kind of just have a little bit of twinkle, but I really like the touch that they add. So then I went back in, applied the black outline to this, and now I'm going to hit this with a coat of matte clear spray from Rust-Oleum, let it dry about an hour, and then I'm going to take 30 milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy and coat this entire cup with this epoxy. I did use the entire 30 milliliters because we do have rough glitter, so I wanted to use enough epoxy so that we could get that fairly smooth before we move on to the next step. So once the cup is cured, we're ready to go in and outline our mountains and our clouds. But before that, I'm going to go in and sand down my top rim really well to expose that thin line of stainless steel, just like that, so that our epoxy has something to adhere to and all of our hard work is sealed in and good to go. I'm just going to quickly wipe the cup down with some rubbing alcohol. I just sprayed it onto a paper towel. Um, you can go in and wash your cup with dish soap and water if you want. I just did the rim really, so I just wiped it off really quick and now we're gonna jump right into our outlining. I'm using these white paint pens from, or this white paint pen, I only use one, from Amazon. They are absolutely fantastic. This was my first time trying them. Um, they're really pigmented, easy to use and I absolutely love them. So I will have those linked down below in the description box. But what I'm doing basically is just outlining the top of my mountain range, as you can see here. And once I'm done outlining, I'm gonna go back through and add a little bit of like snow cap on some of the mountains. Um, not all of them, just a few. And I'm just drawing a little like diagonal line, as you can see there, and then coloring it in. You can add as many as you'd like of these, obviously. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit more to the mountains so that you are 100% sure that they are, in fact, mountains. <laughs> so once I was done with that, I added a few little, like, texture marks, as you can see here, just like kind of some wonky, really earthy lines. And now I'm going to go in and outline the clouds. For the cloud outline, I'm using a silver paint pen from Arteza. This is the thick one. I prefer the thick markers over the thin ones, but totally personal preference. So just going around and outlining all of these areas. If there are any spots that you don't like, um, you can just go in with some rubbing alcohol on a paper towel or a baby wipe and wipe it right off and then go back in with your paint and do it over again. So now that my clouds are outlined, I'm going to go in with this rose gold leafing pen. This one is from PDB and I'm going to add a little bit of texture to my mountains. This marker color or paint pen color matches pretty perfectly with the glitter color for the mountains so it just adds a little bit of like rough kind of rocky texture kind of um, so i'm just drawing these kind of random squiggly lines going up the mountains as you can see there and this is going to just add a little bit more oomph to our mountain range 
And then finally, for the last little bit of our paint detailing, I'm taking that same acrylic paint marker from the beginning, the white one, and I'm going to dot all over my night sky just to create a little bit more of a starry night vibe here. We've got the glitter in the background and our little starbursts. So now I'm going in and adding a few more little white paint dots just to intensify that night sky a little bit. I'm going to let this dry about 30 to 45 minutes and then spray it with a coat of clear matte spray from Rust-Oleum. Let that dry about an hour and now I'm going in with my final coats of epoxy. This first coat over the paint was 30 milliliters. I used the entire 30 on the cup and then the final final coat was between 10 and 15 so it was on the thinner side. Once that coat was all cured, our cup is all finished. So this is the final result. Here's the inspiration picture too, just so you can see them side by side. I'm really proud of this one. I think it looks pretty identical to the inspo pick, which is always great. Um, I really like how this one came out. So I hope that you guys do as well. I hope you're inspired. And this is just a reminder, you can find inspiration anywhere and everywhere. So always have your artist hat on when you're out in the world. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Okay, love you, bye. What? It's kind of weird, but all of the things I'm using, I said that already. It's like outer space, mountains? Outer space mountains. That sounds dumb, but that's what it is. It's outer space mountains. Let's go! Okay, bye.